Save the planet. Get ready. Before we get into Air Twister, I first want to go back to the 1980s. I first came across Space Harrier in what must have been the summer of 1986 or 87, somewhere around there anyway. It came out in 1985, although I don't know how long it took for it to reach the UK. We always went on holiday to Skegness when I was a kid, but that time spent at the coast during the school holidays meant only one thing for me, and that was a week of playing the latest arcade games as they were meant to be played, instead of a port to the Spectrum or Commodore 64, and maybe the Amstrad as well. The odd kid, for some reason, always had an Amstrad. Air Twister is what you could call a spiritual successor, showing a lot of similarities with Space Harrier and being created by the same developer, Yu Suzuki, who is the same guy responsible for Outrun, Afterburner, Hang On, and a load of other classic arcade games. Now, Air Twister was originally released as a mobile game on Apple Arcade in 2022, though to be honest I wasn't even aware of it until the end of last year when it released on PC, as well as PlayStation, Xbox and Switch. Although Space Area to this day remains my favourite ever arcade game, I was slightly hesitant to pick up Air Twister. Reviews were somewhat mixed and watching videos of it just didn't give that same breakneck sense of speed that Space Harrier was memorable for. However, at 50% off during the Steam Summer Sale, along with the realisation that this was created with Unreal Engine and therefore potentially playable with Predog's UEVR injector, I picked it up. I wanted to give it a go anyway, but the thought of it might work okay in VR was just the cherry on top. So, how does Air Twister play in VR? Given that it was never designed with virtual reality in mind and what we have here is a PC port of a mobile game, it plays remarkably well. In fact, the mobile roots of the game are an advantage here, I'd think, as compared to other UEVR games I've tried to get running. The performance here is top notch. I played this using virtual desktop at the ultra setting preset, streaming with AV1 wirelessly to Quest 3 with Wi Fi 6E. The game itself has two built in frame rate options at 60 and 120 FPS. At 60 FPS, with the Quest and Virtual Desktop streaming at 120 Hz, just because 60 divides nice and evenly into 120, some smooth looking visuals, it looked smooth and fluid and with no judder. If you try streaming it with a 60 FPS option, with the streaming option set at 72 Hz, it just looks ugly and juddery and, in my opinion, unplayable. I mean, technically it is playable, but why you'd settle for a juddery, stuttery mess when you don't have to, well, you wouldn't. All of this is on top of me recording 60 FPS video as well. The mobile routes of this game really do give you overhead to play around here. This was done on an old, though admittedly overclocked i7 8700K with an RTX 4070 Ti. I could probably push the rendering and streaming quality even higher, but I was wanting to make sure I could get some smooth gameplay capture as well, so I didn't want to push it to the max. Visually, it isn't perfect, but I'd easily call it playable. Occasionally, there's the odd shader that only seems to be rendered in one eye, and if you played around with UEVR before, then you'll know what that's like. During the cutscene, there are black bars that frame the scene, and normally on a monitor, they're just like at the top and the bottom of the screen. But in VR, they're rendered as flat, floating rectangles in 3D space, something which you can't see in this video, actually, as recording UEVR capture will often record what looks like a normal monitor view with the HUD, the score, the lives, etc. looking like you'd expect. In the headset though, this is all floating in 3D space. It's worth pointing out though that this is all with the basic UEVR default. I didn't play around with any settings. I literally just clicked the inject button and the game was in VR. So it's possible that one of the other rendering modes will sort out any shader issues. Or if you have the UEVR knowledge, it might be possible to disable any shaders that don't render correctly. Also, while you spend most of your time flying forward into the level, there are some camera pans in cutscenes that could be uncomfortable for some people, but what struck me was that it doesn't feel like there'll be much work needed to add proper VR support to it. To my mind, with some work, this really could be a Res Infinite level VR game. As far as the game goes, there are a lot of parallels with Space Harrier. There's a lot of circle strafing to avoid incoming fire, which mostly looks very similar to the overall multicoloured firepower you get in that game. Some of the mushrooms look like the size of a house, where others tower over you like a skyscraper. If you're watching this and haven't tried VR, you really don't know how realistic, or in this case, how hyper-realistic the sense of scale can be in VR. Some enemies are directly inspired from Space Harrier as well. For example, some skeletal dragon enemies are based on Valder, the level 15 boss from Space Harrier, the Tomos, the spherical enemies that split open into three parts effectively make a return, 
and every level ends with a boss battle just like in Space Harrier. But anyway, I'll wrap this up. If you're an arcade shooter, go check it out, especially if it's on sale. And certainly if you want a UEVR game that's actually performant and doesn't require an RTX 4090 in order to make it run well. I'll leave you with some more footage of the game, but if you'd like to listen to some VR gaming and hardware discussion, then please check out the Recentered podcast, give us a like and subscribe, it'd be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers everyone.